So I finally got some uh, some time uh, over a weekend to put a, a decent amount of work into a personal project. Um, so I hop back into the pop light. It's been like a month since I've been able to touch this project. Um, the last part that I left off on was actually troubleshooting the light patterns going out to the arms uh, once they were in the case itself. So for some reason, whenever I put it in um, and activated it, they kind of worked. But the, the issue, which I can show really quick, was that two of the arms were not working. So I started going into uh, component isolation mode. So this is the problem that I was having before, where the outer arms work, the inner arms don't. Um, and I jumped through and troubleshot to try and narrow down what the problem was, and I found out that it was this board. So let me show you how I found it. Uh, this is actually going in reverse. Um, what I did while it was still in the case was to rule out the, uh, the power by, um, bypassing the, uh, the, by bypassing the LiPo and, uh, battery pack and the LiPo charger, which I've got sitting over here, like bypassing those, uh, and going from this, uh, 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 double-A battery pack using, uh, using some rechargeable, uh, batteries, which give me the voltage I need. Um, and that was, uh, like, even this, I was still having the issue, so I put together a really quick, uh, circuit board, um, to, uh, to kind of, like, pull it out and troubleshoot, and found that on this circuit board, I didn't have the issues. Like, if I, if I hop these back to the, uh, the resistors and jumpers out here, Let's see. Let me do this real quick. So if I jump these out here, and those probably aren't in the exact same order, and activate it. Oh, yeah. Also, I have to plug the the light in. So doing that, all of them work and activate. So it seems like if power wasn't the issue, the code isn't the issue because this is the same test code that I was using um, whenever it was plugged into the board. The code isn't the issue. It seems like the issue is isolated somewhere in here. Um, so uh, the next thing that I did, actually the thing that I did to let me pull it out to this uh, board was to... Um, Let's see, let me route this back through the circuit board. Um, so, got the signal signal for the LEDs coming through here. Um, uh, the next thing that I did was to actually pull the light off and then use my, uh, or the, uh, the oscilloscope to kind of troubleshoot, uh, to see if I can figure out what's going on. So if I pop this into ground and look at each of the signal pins, I should see, let's see, I should see, uh, the, the same pattern for each of the signal pins because it's all the same, uh, the same code going up. So, um, like right now we're looking at each square is about a half volt. So this is like a one, two, three, like roughly a three volt signal, like, like two to three volt signal passing back and forth. And this is for one of the legs that does work. So if I switch it here, um, now I'm seeing that I'm getting a signal, but that signal is, uh, is much lower. So it's only like about like like uh, a half a volt to two volts uh, high signal. So, which would explain why the LEDs aren't lighting up if they're not uh, actually sending out a strong enough signal to activate the in, uh, the chips inside each of the LEDs. So the middle leg has the same problem with this lower signal. And then the outer leg is, outer leg, um, and this outer one, oh, I've got them reverse. So the outer leg uh, 
has the the signal level that we're expecting. So that totally makes sense, where the two outer legs are getting a strong enough signal to activate uh, uh, to activate the LEDs. The the two inner ones are getting a diminished signal, um, which means that the uh, the the LEDs may have the power going to the actual LEDs themselves, but don't have a large uh, a strong enough signal to actually tell the LEDs what to do. So. Um, so, uh, let's see. So the last part that I did, which really kind of drives home the point, um, let me make sure all these are in the right spot, is I jumped the, let's see. I jumped the, the pins out from the microcontroller into the board where I know that they're having the problem and then back out to the light. And if I turn this on, same problem that's before. So if we know that the middle tube, uh, something between the pins of the microcontroller and the out pins for the, uh, that go to actual LED strips, if we know that the issue is in between there, if it's here, then switching a known good arm with a bad arm should mean that the problem doesn't travel. Like if, if the problem was the signal coming out of the microcontroller to one of the specific legs um, and we switch them, then we would see this one stop working and this one working, for instance. But if the trouble is here with just the routing, we should be able to switch them. We know that we know that if we bypass this, all of the legs work. Um, we should be able to switch them and see, let's see. I know I should unplug it and do it, but actually, yeah, let me do this so I don't fry my, <laughs> fry the strip. So the problem does not travel with the pin that's being, uh, that's being signaled. So even if we swap known good for potentially bad, the problem still relies in here. So that means that I should be able to go through and um, look at the, like basically go through and, uh, and fix the two middle, um, either the, the resistors or the jumpers in between. And really because of how crammed all this is and how it's kind of like overlapping some of the other cables and stuff, I'm actually just going to pull all of them out, uh, like clean up the bottom of the board, uh, and then just re-solder them fresh and double check it here before I put it back into, into the actual case. So, but it's really nice to have the problem narrowed down specifically to this board that would be easily replaced if I needed to go through and do it, but I think that I can salvage it.